So how can you solve parity in blindfolded three style if you're an intuitive solver who doesn't like to memorize algorithms? I'll explain my favorite way to solve parity quickly, then go through the steps in detail, then talk about some alternatives and some optimizations to make it more efficient. This video is for beginner intuitive three style solvers who already know the basics of three style blind solving, but need a way to solve parity. If you are a complete beginner, there's a link in the description to my beginner's guide to intuitive three style. So first, the short version. You know you have parity when you have an odd number of letters in your memo. This is a problem because you need two letters for a commutator. So we'll just add the letter B to the end of our corner memo and our edge memo to make an even number of letters. Executing that memo will make a scrambled cube look like this, with two unsolved edges and two unsolved corners. Since the unsolved pieces are next to each other in matched pairs, we can do a pair commutator to make the cube look like this, with the U layer displaced by a quarter turn. And of course, then solve the cube with a U prime. Okay, so now the long version. Saying that a scramble has parity means that it has odd parity, which means that we need to swap pieces an odd number of times to solve the cube. This is why odd parity scrambles have an odd number of letters in their memo. Since commutators always do an even number of swaps, commutators can only directly solve even parity scrambles. Every quarter turn of any face of the cube will convert the cube between even and odd parity. That's easy to see here on this cube. It has two unsolved edges here and here, and two unsolved corners here and here. But if we do a U prime, you can see that the cube now has three unsolved edges, one, two, three, and three unsolved corners, one, two, three. Two unsolved pieces means odd parity, and since we can solve them with one swap, buffer to B. And after a U prime, these three unsolved pieces can be solved with two swaps, buffer to D, to A. So solving an odd parity scramble just requires us to add an extra quarter turn to our solve. This is a problem in blind solving because we can't do any moves until we're, until we're put on the blindfold, and we don't know whether we have parity until we're halfway through our memo. So let's look at what we can do to solve an odd parity scramble intuitively. So try this short scramble. R, U, R prime. Since the scramble has an odd number of quarter turns, it has odd parity. Our corner memo is E, I, P. And we're back to our buffer with everything else solved. Since we have an odd number of letters in our memo, we have odd parity. So we'll add the letter B to make the memo, E, I, P, B. Similarly, our edge memo is J, A, D. And we're back to our buffer, so we add the letter B to make it J, A, D, B. Let's execute corners. So it's E, I, and then P, B. Now corners are solved with C and B switched onto edges. J, A, I'll do it like this. And D is our buffer, so we add B for DB. Now 
now the cube looks just like we wanted with two pairs unsolved. Now I'm going to explain the pair commutator in a way that's easy to see and understand intuitively, and then I'll talk about some ways to optimize it. So if we do a u prime, we can see that we've converted from odd to even parity, and we have three unsolved pieces of each type in three matched pairs. We can solve all six at the same time with a pair commutator, which is the same as the corner commutator dA, but with wide d moves during the insertions. First, we conjugate the A pair out of the U layer with the B move. Then begin the commutator by inserting A into C using a wide D move. Interchange with the U prime. Undo the insertion. Undo interchange. Undo the conjugate, and the cube is solved. Now, that is a fine way to do it, but I like to add two optimizations to make it a lot easier which will eventually look like this. First, instead of converting to even parity and then doing the commutator, I like to do the commutator first and then convert to even parity. This makes the insertions use L moves instead of F moves, which is easier and faster. And the second optimization is that I replace the Y D moves with U moves. Uh, this makes it even easier, but less intuitive, because some of the L and R moves are swapped. So here's the final algorithm I use. So I conjugate with an R move, then insert with L U2 R prime. Since we're using U2 instead of Y D, we have to begin the insertion with an L move and finish it with an R move. Interchange with U prime, undo insertion with R U2 L prime, and undo interchange with a U. Then undo the conjugate with an R prime and solve the cube with a U prime. Of course, if that's too unintuitive, you can just do a regular old pair commutator with wide D moves. Now you can also optimize your memorization uh, to make this a lot easier and save some commutators sometimes. If you find out that you have parity at the end of your corner memo, you can swap the C and B edges during your edge memo rather than doing it at the end, which can save a commutator. Graham Siggins and Kevin Matthews also invented a method called weak swap, which enables you to swap the C and B stickers effect, uh, efficiently on your first set of pieces before you know whether or not you have parity. Graham's video, which I will link in the description, uses this on edges first, but it also works when memorizing corners first. I'll give a quick demonstration of weak swap, weak swap for corners. Watch Graham's video for a more thorough explanation. The basic concept of weak swap is to assume that you have parity when you get a cycle break. So if you run into your buffer before the UBR piece is solved, then solve your buffer to UBR and use the UBR piece as your new buffer piece, since it will be solved to your buffer location at UFR. The buffer location stays the same, you just solve a different piece to that location. If you have odd parity, this will save you an algorithm, and if you have even parity, this will just function as a cycle break and will not add an extra algorithm. Weak swap only works if you run into your buffer before the UBR piece. If you run into UBR before your buffer, uh, like we did in the previous example, then you just have to solve UBR normally and add B to the end of the corner memo if you have parity. I'll demonstrate. Try the scramble R u prime r u2. In this scramble, we start with our buffer twisted in place. Uh, let's say we use the less efficient method and start a new cycle randomly at a. Our memo would be a o i q e. And since it's odd parity, we would add B and have three commutators, AO, IQ, EB. But we can save one whole commutator if we solve our buffer to UBR first. This makes the memo N, R, K, D. Two commutators instead of three. A big difference. Since we have already swapped B and C, an even number of letters now means that we have odd parity. 
Now, when we do edge memo, we can solve the C sticker to the B position as well. Our memo is J B. This is our buffer, and we're going to solve it here. It's J B, then A D. And that's the sticker that belongs at C since we're searching B and C. And we have saved the commutator here as well. This is a little bit more complex than just adding B to the end of the memo, but it can potentially save two whole commutators, which makes a big difference for speed and accuracy. Here's the whole solve using the more efficient parity method and the optimized pair commutator. So um, first, we have n r then k d and all the corners are solved with these two swapped. Now we'll do edges J, B. And now we have our two pairs here, and we'll do the pair commutator, conjugate. Solve it the U prime. So now you can solve parity in a blind solve using a pair commutator instead of learning the whole set of parity algorithms. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks.